Welcome to the tutorial functions. So in the previous tutorial we learned how to create motion paths like the one that we see here for this group of birds. So in Animate Pro whenever you use the transform tool with the animate mode on and you move your drawing objects across the camera Animate Pro automatically creates a function for your animated object. And what a function is is just a mathematical equation that allows your objects to move from one place to another. However, if you want to modify this function manually, you can do that as well. For example, with the birds, um, we see that if we press the play button, they move across in a very even way. That's almost mechanical. So they sort of lose a little bit of the life-life quality that they could have because when birds swoop down, they start off a little bit slow and then they speed up and swoop quickly as they drop and descend. So that would give them more of a lifelike feeling. So in order to do something like that, you would need to use the function curves. But first let's recreate the path. So let's double click on the drawing layer or the peg element depending on if you've added a peg or not. And then I'm going to go to the position heading here in the layer properties. Um, and I just noticed that I have the 3D path selected and what I really want is a separate path selected otherwise we won't get the proper functions that we're looking for. Um, this isn't too big a deal for the birds because unlike the camera, the birds don't move in 3D space. They don't move along the z-axis and that's really when you need the 3D path selected. So I'm going to choose separate and automatically you can see that the path, the trajectory has changed in the camera view. We lost our control point which is normal because you can't have control points unless you have 3D selected. And the next thing I'm going to do is from the drop down menu for the x axis position, I'm going to click on this black arrow and either select create bezier or create ease. So in this case, I'm going to select create bezier and I'm going to explain the different function types later on. So then I'm just going to click close. And you can see that my trajectory took kind of a really weird shape here. The next thing I want to do is modify this path. And I can do this by changing keyframe values. So let's add a keyframe first. And to do this in the timeline is quite simple. You can select the position where you would like to add a keyframe. And you can either right click and select the menu item insert keyframe. Or you could use the keyboard shortcut Command F6 for Mac or Control F6 for Windows. So you can see that the keyframe actually appeared on my trajectory as well. Now to actually change the keyframe, we can do this also in several ways. First, let's uncollapse the bird peg so we can see our position X. And then let's uncollapse the data view as well. So I can either change my X position in the data view by hovering over this field. And as you can see, my cursor's turned into a white hand with a double arrow head. And if I do this, I can drag the values. So now all my birds have moved more to the right um, along the x-axis, like that. Or I can just click and a field will appear where I can type in a value. Or in the coordinates and control points panel here, I can also enter in values for the X position. First by clicking on the keyframe and then, so 10 east is obviously along the Cartesian plane, east is here, west is here, north is here, south is here. So you can either use negative or west to go backwards or um, have a positive value or go east to go more towards the right here. So then if we move the red playhead back, and fourth, you can see the only real thing that I've succeeded in doing is changing the X value for the entire flight of the bird. But what I want to do is get the bird back to the way it looked before when we just selected the birds using the transform tool in the camera view and let Animate Pro automatically make that movement for us. So as you can see, all the Y values have been kept. That's why the bird's moving up and down because before they swooped across, they also moved up and down. So if we go to frame one, um, and then move the values here as well. So you can create a keyframe first, or if you just change the values, a keyframe will automatically be created. 
So I believe the birds started closer to somewhere around here, let's say. So now they move from left to right like they did previously. And if we select the birds, we can see the trajectory. It's a bit far. Let's uh, move them back. It's a bit better. And now we'd like to make take our endpoint, our last keyframe, and have it end up somewhere around here. And I think even the value for value 20 is a bit uh, a bit large. So maybe something like that. So that, that's not bad. We're just missing our curve now in the middle. Um, also to show you quickly, after you've added a keyframe, or actually several keyframes, you can delete them by selecting them. So I'll select both here, the range and right-clicking and selecting delete keyframes or by using the keyboard shortcut listed beside. If you selected the range and then hit the delete key, what you would actually be doing is also deleting the drawings that correspond to that keyframe. Whoops, right here. So you can only really delete using the keyboard shortcut or the menu item um, or the commands from the top menu. And also, if you want to jump between keyframes, so if you want to jump from this frame to this frame to this frame, just using um, keyboard shortcuts, you can use the apostrophe to jump ahead, and you can use a semicolon to jump backwards. So now let's work on modifying our path. And to do this, we're going to bring up the function view. So we're going to go here to where we have the top and the side, and we're going to select function. And it's always, it always appears um, blank like this until you actually select the function you'd like to see. So in this case it's our x position. So here we go. So before we fill around too much in the function view, let's look around a little bit first. So if we go to the view menu at the top and select the menu item view, set vertical layout, you can change the physical layout of the function view. And for some people, this looks more visually pleasing. Or you can always change it back. And right now, as I mentioned, we selected the position X for the bird peg, which is what we have selected here. But generally speaking, you can also add more functions to this drop-down menu so you can toggle back and forth without having to scroll up and down the timeline and select them from the timeline. So to do this, you need to click on this function button here. And then from the list, you could pick a bunch of functions that you'd like to see. So if you want to see bird1, uh, angle z, if you want to scroll down and look at bird3 skew um, from the peg. So this is already selected. We can also select position y from the peg. Um, and then as you notice, we have also the functions for all the other items that exist in our project. So not just the birds, but the camera, the dojo, all the parts of the Karate Rabbit, you know, the mountains, the punching bag, everything. So in that way, if you have these selected now, if I click off this menu, anything that I checkmarked from that list now exists here, and I can toggle back and forth and change those functions here without having, like I said, uh, to keep going back to the timeline again and again. So originally we wanted birds uh, dash p for peg position x. So let's go back to that. And what you see here, these thin gray lines, is that as we're looking at the X position, which is the darkest gray line, you can also look at the Z and the Y position. Um, the blue line that you see is actually your, your current frame, I believe. If I click on Show Current Frame, there we go. So it snapped to the current frame. So it's because this wasn't selected, it was over here. So we'll keep Show Current Frame on. So then to edit a function the function view, you can actually click on one of the existing keyframes and then play with its bezier handles. So let's move this down and maybe make something that looks like this.
So as you see here, as you scroll across, what we're essentially doing is going across the different frames. So here's frame 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And the values are actually increasing upwards. So we're actually moving across the camera view because we're increasing incrementally in value. If I brought this down here, for example, what you would see is this position going back here so we wouldn't be moving across the plane. We wouldn't be moving from left to right or across the x-axis. And I'll show you. So if I did this, for example, like I said, you saw the, the birds jump back. So it's like they would go forward. As you see, this is up here. So at 20, they would go far, and then they would come back again to around their starting position at frame 40 which is obviously a very unnatural way for birds to fly. And the reason we see it up and down, once again, is the Y values. And what I'm doing here, though, I don't know if you noticed, um, the, the list hatching that goes across the trajectory, I mentioned this before, um, actually represents a frame. And as you notice, the distance between two of these hatch marks or frames is different. So when we had the computer automatically um, create our trajectory and we had control points this was all very even so the velocity was the same but here it will we'll travel faster between two frames where here we will travel slower between two frames so what essentially is the birds are doing is they're going quickly through this part and then slowing down and then going quickly and slowing down and going quickly so you can see you can also play with the velocity as well as the position when you work with a graph like this so if we wanted to, the bird just to move across with a straight velocity, it would look something sort of like this. Like that. So, mm, straight across. So what we essentially want the beginnings of something like this. And so we're gradually starting to get that curve. And as you see, it slowly swoops down and then soars quickly across. So if we bring our playhead here and press the play button, we can see how that looks. This looks pretty slow there. I can have the drop off. What I'd actually have to do is move this keyframe closer here so that drop off happened very quickly and then the long quick sweep. So that brings us into the next part, uh, which is how to add a keyframe in the function view. So what you would do is you'd actually select the frame you would like. So you can select the frame here in the frame box, or you could move the frame here along the playhead and you can see the blue line moves across to show us. So let's say at frame 10, for example, or like I said, I could type in the value here. Well, there's no point. Let's, let's say 5 for example. And then you can add a keyframe by clicking on this button here. And now as soon as I did that you saw that the value field now opened up and a lot of the other uh, parameters, their fields now become enabled for us to enter in values. So in this value bar I can uh, change this to whatever I want. So let's say 2 for example. Or I can slide it up and down. And then if I want to delete this keyframe, you know it's still selected because it's red, and you just click on the same button again, and it eliminates that keyframe. Okay, well, let's give up on refining the curve for now because there's some other things I'd like to show you. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how to share a function curve. We have looked at this before when we did the rigging videos. I believe we um, attached the functions of the patches for the elbows and knees to the arms and legs. Um, another good example of why you would want to share functions between two layers in the timeline is given in the user guide. 
um, they describe an animated plane that's doing loop-de-loops and that you might want to attach your camera's peg to that plane to get its perspective. However, in doing that, you might actually make your viewer quite nauseous. So what you could do is just share the functions of the X, Y, and Z position, eliminating the scale, skew, and rotation. So to share a function, the first thing you have to do is what we did before when we created a function, and that's if you remember when we double-clicked on the peg, we brought up its layer properties, and when we selected Create Bezier from this drop-down, that's how we created the function curve for the X position of the bird peg layer. So after you've created the function, what you now have to do is make the function public. And what that means is every layer peg that you create in the timeline has its own set of functions, so its own functions for its X position, Y position, scale, skew, etc. Um, but if you want to then share those, you make them public by right-clicking on the layer, so it's the bird peg layer, and selecting the menu item share functions. Now those functions are available for all the other layers in the timeline. So then I'm going to collapse this first and then click off this to des deselect it. Then I'm going to click on the add new drawing layer button and if we scroll down to the bottom of the timeline we'll see there's a new drawing here. Then if I uncollapse the new drawing layer and scroll down you'll see that the three um, positions, the X, Y, and Z coordinate positions are uh, connected, so we want to unconnect them. And we do this by double clicking on the layer to bring up the layer properties, and then once again selecting separate instead of 3D. And then if I click on this black arrow from the Bezier menu, you'll see that it says birds dash P, so the bird peg layer. And from this, you can now select all of the functions that belong to this layer because I made that entire layer's functions public. So now what I want to do is I want to select birds peg position X. I'm not sure why it's underscore one, but we'll select that. So now what I've effectively done is attached the X uh, function for this new drawing layer to that the birds X function. And I'm just going to close this. So that's how you would go about sharing a layer. And in fact, I think I'll delete this now that I'm done. And actually maybe go back so that we can unshare that function. So before when I was showing you, let's just go back to it, the drop down list here, you might have wondered what some of these other um, menu items are. Well obviously at the top you have the Create Bezier, Create Ease. So these two different types of functions are different ways of editing your path. Um, and it really just depends on preference on which way you feel more comfortable working with. If you're used to working with Ease In and Ease Out when you do animation, um, like what I was mentioning before, when you can speed up or slow down a movement going in or out of it. Um, the Bezier, you know, with the handles. So you know, you can fool around with both and decide. And below that, you have local, which what it does is it um, unconnects the parameter from any other function and it makes it public. Then you have the Bezier Ease Expression and Velo Base, and these ones are what allow you to look at the public functions for the Bezier, for the Ease, for the Expression, and for the Velo Base, um, as we saw before. So these are public, obviously. Then under here, the connected shows you all the connected public functions, the unconnected shows you all the unconnected public functions, and the all shows you all the public functions. So that's what you would see in the drop-down list. So the last thing I want to show you is how to copy and paste motion. And you can do this in two ways. You can do it by pasting a cycle or by doing a paste special. So let's collapse the bird group and get rid of it and bring up the punching bag, I guess the dojo to make it make a little bit more sense. So this isn't the best example, but at least it's a sort of a string of keyframed movements. And often in animation you'll get to a point where you need to cycle something again and again. And obviously rather than animating it again and again, it's more efficient just to copy and paste a range of keyframes uh, in order to repeat that motion. 
So to do that, you can select the first keyframe in the range, hold down shift, and then select the last keyframe. Then you can right click and select the menu item, copy cells from timeline. Then you can choose a place down the timeline where you would like to paste this range. And it can be right after the range or it can be further along or much further along in your animation. So in this instance, I'll put it right after um, our range of keyframes here. Then I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and select Edit, Pace Cycle. And the Pace Cycle dialog box opens. So in the first field, you can put the number of cycles that you would like, and obviously you could use um, the arrow keys, or you can just type the number directly in the field. And then you have your cycle types. So there are four cycle types. The first one is normal forward, and this is exactly what you probably think it is. This cycle will take this entire range of frames and paste it exactly as it is um, three times because you have number of cycles, but one after the other. Then if you select the next one in the list, reverse, what this one will do is actually take this range of keyframes and flip it, um, and flip it each time. So uh, this last frame that you see here will be the first frame for the new range, um, and it'll be the first frame for the new range again and again for all three cycles. Then you have forward reverse, and what that does is it'll paste the first cycle of the, of the three, um, that'll look identical to the one here, so it would go from the first frame to the last frame, and then it'll go in reverse. So then the second cycle that's pasted here will actually be uh, the last frame first, and then the first frame last, and then once again, it'll because it oscillates back and forth, it'll do another uh, forward range because we only have three cycles selected. Then the last menu item, reverse forward, We'll do the opposite of what I just explained. So the first cycle of the three selected here will be the last frame first and the first frame last. Then the second cycle will look identical to this range. Um, and then the last cycle of the three will be in reverse again. And that's once again just because you happen to have three. If it was four, uh, like an even number, you would have uh, you know reverse forward, reverse forward, etc. So let's just for fun choose this and say OK. And you actually have to extend the number of frames in your scene so you can see them all. But it's just as I said, so we, we chose reverse forward. So you can see it's in reverse. Here the arrows are long uh, to short, and here they're short to long, then long to short, then short to long. So it, it is in fact reverse forward reverse. I'm just going to undo that. So the second way that you can actually paste motion, um, as I mentioned before, is by doing a paste special. So let's select this range of frames again. Right click one more time and say copy cells from timeline. Let's select frame 31 again to do the paste. And this time from the right click menu, let's select paste special. So the paste special dialog box opens. And in this dialog box, there are two tabs, the basic tab and the advanced tab. So in the basic tab, you have the same options that you saw in the paste cycle dialog box, the number of cycles and the cycle type. The reason that these four options are grayed out is because in the advanced tab, we have do nothing selected. If we chose something such as add, remove exposure in the basic tab, these options would then be enabled. So let's stay with do nothing, and I'm not going to go into a lot of these options. Um, all we really need to talk about here is the add, remove keyframe section. Um, and it, this is just to let you know that you can select which translations you would like pasted from the range of keyframes that you've copied. So I might only want to copy the motion velocity and rotation information from those keyframes and not the scale and skew. So I can do that. So I'm going to keep it at three cycles and keep it at reverse forward and then hit enter to validate my changes and as you can see if I pull this back you do still have three cycles and they are reverse forward reverse and then if you uncollapse the punching bag peg you'll see that you have the keyframes for the x y and z position but that if you go down further that you do not have the keyframes for the scale um, or the skew.
So that's it for the tutorial functions. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Adjusting the Velocity.